Welcome to Highline Excel class number 52. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link, and you can download the workbook, Week 10, Business 214. If you're enrolled in the class, just go to our Week 10 website. Hey, we got to, this is our last week in this class, and we got to talk about macros. What is a macro? Macro just means code, a set of instructions uh, for common repetitive tasks. Now, the the code is officially called VBA, Visual Basic Application. Now you can write this by hand and it's great because it allows you to do lots of things that Excel might not have an automated feature for. But for us, we're just going to learn how to use the macro recorder. And here's the deal, there's lots of times you get the same report every single month and you have to do the same formatting every time. And the macro allows you to turn on this recorder, a macro recorder. It watches you format this report, but it is recording code behind the scenes. Then you just assign a keyboard shortcut or a button, and you can run that macro uh, every month when you get this report. So it's a great way when you have repetitive tasks to speed things up. Now. We're going to just quickly look at a few things. Alt F11, that is the keyboard shortcut to show you the VBA editor. Let's try it. Alt F11. Over here, so over here on the left is our project browser here. The keyboard shortcut to open this is Control R. Down here are properties. F4 is the keyboard shortcut to open that. We're not going to get, really get to use that. But over here, there's a couple things. There's what we will see, a VBA personal.xls workbook. This is a hidden workbook where we're going to store some of our macros. Here are more functions. Uh, these are the add-ins. Uh, some of the videos you've seen that I've done add-ins, but we're not going to see those here. Ah, and here's the name of our workbook. And look, this is the in the VBA editing window. It says, hey, we found we found this workbook that's open. Here's all the sheets if you scroll down. And a workbook. And after we record our macros, there'll be something called a module. And that module is where it will store the code. OK, uh, this is the VBA editor window. You could actually double click uh, this sheet. And it would open over here on the right. And you could type out your code. Hey. We're not going to type out the code. We're going to use the uh, macro recorder. We'll also see how to copy code from the internet, because all, a lot of good code is out there. And then you just paste Control c Control v and then you automatically have some great code. All right, let's close the VBA editor window. I always think of the uh, macro recorder, of course, as a, as a tape recorder. And we'll get to see how amazing it is to use that. We're not going to uh, type our code out. But this is 2007, and we have a big problem. There's a couple problems. The first biggest one is we got to know which file extension to use. You got to use .xlsm. M is for macro. If you have .xlsx, which is the default on mo most computers, that will not accept macros. That X means no macro. So this is the one you want to use. In 2003, which is the file extension we have, you can just use .xls. You can have code or not. Uh, the, the next big thing is we've got to show the developer ribbon. And how we do that, the developer ribbon has a lot of our VBA uh, um, buttons. The uh, turn on the recorder, show me the list of uh, recorded macros. Sh uh, relative and absolute cell references for macros. So we don't have it. So we have to go up to the orb here and down to Excel options. And then over here under popular, you simply click show developer tab. And then I'm going to click um, OK down here in the bottom. So now we have our developer ribbon. And sure enough, there is that gets us to Visual Basics. Alt F11 is a keyboard shortcut. That shows us our list of macros, whether recorded or not. Alt F8. There is our relative reference button. If you are recording a macro in relative reference, it better, you better see that orange. If it's an absolute macro, you better click on it in advance. 
and make sure there's no orange. Absolute simply means if you're recording a macro and you click in A12, in the recording behind the scenes it says A12. If you have this turned on and it's orange, then that means if you are in A1 and you click in A2, you just went one row below. So we'll see how to use that. And there's the record macro button. You can even insert some uh, button and assign VBA code to it. Um, so relative uh, cell references and macros, we'll see that. We'll also see an example for absolute. Uh, there's the, some notes right there for where to find it in 2003. We don't have a ribbon. You have to find the stop recording to um, macro toolbar. Stop recording. And I have some notes here of how to do that. The stop recording uh, macro toolbar should just pop up when you uh, start recording your macro. OK, um, I think the rest of these notes here. Uh, we'll see the difference between storing, storing a macro in this workbook and your personal workbook. That's a personal workbook is hidden, and that means you can record a macro and use it in any workbook you open on your computer. All right. Um, and we'll see these other notes here also. Let's go and record our first macro. Now, here's the deal. Macros are great. Recorded macros are great because if you do the same thing all the time, and you don't want to, uh, you know, sp spend all the steps to do that particular thing, then you record a macro. Here's our setup. We have a formula right here. If I hit F2, this is just sum, and we have a workbook, and we're always copying, and then coming over two cells to my left, right clicking and pointing to paste special, and then clicking values then clicking OK, and then the dancing ants are annoying us, so we click Escape. That's what, like six, seven uh, clicks right there. If it's something we always do, oh, we didn't pay special value. Let's do that in Control-C, right click, pay special values. How did it not do that? <coughs> click OK, and then Escape. So that's the uh, you know four or five clicks we always do there, and we're tired of doing it because we have lots of uh, times we have to do it. We're copying, paste special values, two cells to my left. So this is an example of when you want to record a macro. Let's go ahead and see how it's done. Where do we record? Uh, turn on the macro right there in 2007 in earlier version. or In this version, you can also, there's a button on the status bar. Now in earlier versions, you can go Alt T for Tools, M for Macros, and R for Record. Okay, so 2007, you can use that button or the ribbon or uh, keyboard shortcut from earlier version. Here we have it. We got to give it a name. I'm going to say paste special values two cells to right. Notice I didn't have any spaces there. Notice I'm giving it a real big name. I like to name my macros explicit. So when I'm looking at my list of macros, I'm like not confused. I can see exactly what it is. We can assign it a keyboard shortcut. I'm going to hold Shift and V. Now, there's a difference between this workbook. That means the code will be recorded in this workbook. If you select Personal Macro Workbook, totally awesome trick, because then this keyboard shortcut and this macro is available in any workbook. And let's say this uh, you have this particular task that you just do all the time, week in and week out, copying and pasting it two cells to the left. So I'm definitely recording it in this personal macro workbook. This is a hidden workbook. We'll unhide it later and look at it. You always want to type a good description. Copy, paste, special value, two cells to, to the left. Store in personal hidden workbook so I can use it in, it in any workbook on my computer. Uh, this macro will not um, be on someone else's uh, computer. This is only on your uh, computer. Click OK. And here's what we're going to do. Oh, notice I had this cell selected before I started. And I want to very quickly go up here before I do anything and look and see, is my relative cell reference uh, button orange? And it is. In 2003, it's on the stop recording. So it's the littlest toolbar you've ever seen. All right. So two things. I had that relative cell reference on, and that cell was already selected before I turned on the recorder. Control-C, 
arrow, arrow to the right. I'm going to right click because that will work in all versions. Paste special, values. Now if you make any mistakes, the macro recorder will record it. <laughs> and now I'm going to click OK. The dancing ants are still dancing around, so I'm going to click Escape because I don't want the I want the macro to turn it off. Escape. So there you go. Then we click Stop. There it is in 2007 down on the Status Toolbar. The Stop Recording Toolbar in 2003, or you can even go up to the right there. All right. Now let's test it and see. I'm going to come come right here and Control Shift V. Wow, that is so cool. Now let's click down here, a different one. Control Shift V. I'm going to come down here, Control Shift V. Oh, that is so cool. How about if I come down here to a completely different uh, column, Control Shift V? Sure enough, it went two cells uh, to my left and copy paste special values. Now let's go take a look at that code. Remember, we did a relative uh, cell reference macro. Now, our keyboard or developer, and then there's our list of macros. We're going to use Alt F8. Alt Oh, I'm sorry, and you have to hold Alt and then F8. There it is. It says personal.xls. Now, I want to uh, look at this. This is the list of all the macros. We, we only have one. We've only recorded one. If you didn't assign a keyboard shortcut, you could click the Run button. If you didn't have a keyboard shortcut and you wanted one, you would click Options. And then there it is. We can see it right there. You could delete it. A lot of times when you're recording macros, they don't work the first or second or third time. Sometimes it gets quite frustrating when you're learning macros for the first time. So you can delete it and try again. Ah, edit. I want to click edit and look at the code. Oops, this is a hidden workbook. So we actually have to go unhide it. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to click close. In 2007, you go to view and then there's Unhide. In 2003 and earlier, you go to the Windows menu, Unhide. I'm going to unhide it. There's a Unhide dialog box. You can have as many workbooks hidden as you want. I'm going to unhide this one. This is, by the way, in the Excel startup folder on your uh, computer. I'm going to click OK. Now I can Alt F8. Now that I have this workbook open, you can see it says Personal right there. And sure enough, there it is. Now I can click Edit. OK, here it is. Oh, there's a personal hidden workbook there. There's our uh, week 10 workbook that we have open, so it sees uh, two of them. And look, now it has a module folder, and there's module right there. If we scroll down here, there's no module folder yet, because we haven't recorded any macros in there. Now let's go over and take a look here. And what it did is. Uh, selection, that means the active cell dot copy, active cell dot offset. And offset, you give it a number of rows to add or subtract, a number of columns to add or subtract. N add no rows, so it's going to remain in the same row, but add two columns. So it's when we we're in B, we ended up in D. When we started in C, we ended up in E. Uh, and then there's the code for uh, paste special values. And then there's the application dot cut copy mode equals false. That is the escape key to turn the dancing ants off. So a little bit of code there. Totally speeds things up. Now I'm going to close this. This is the personal workbook. I'm going to hide it. View and then hide right there. So again, we saw uh, with our first macro, we did a relative uh, cell reference macro. But boy, Control Shift B was a lot faster than copy, right click, all that kind of junk. Uh, now let's do a slightly different one. And uh, sometimes when you're learning to to make macros, you just got to like record 10 of them straight in a row doing the stupidest little thing just to get the hang of it, of how to turn it on, turn it off, go look at the code. So watch this. We're going to do a stupid one and then see if it uh, uh, we can t get it to run on different sheets, etc. And this one's going to be absolute. So before I even start, I'm going to come here and make sure the orange yellow is not on. By the way, Control F1 shows our ribbon on and off like that. So there it is. It's not showing. Um, and I'm going to click here. I'm going to call it Add Color, because all we're going to do is select a little range and add some color and some border, some formatting. I'm going to call this Add Color. I'm going to add the keyboard shortcut. Actually, I'm going to leave it off. I'm definitely not going to put it in my personal. I'm going to record it in this workbook. And then we'll see how that module gets inserted. And then uh, Add Color and Borders. 
to, and let's say uh, N1 to P5. That's the range. Click OK. So N1 to P5. So watch this. When I take my cursor and click an N1, there's no offset function saying, you know, jump this far over here. This is getting recorded as N1. So I'm going to go N1 to P6, I think what it is what I said. And then I'm going to click some formatting. I'm going to add some formatting, some borders, some uh, this. I'm going to add some uh, font. And then I'm going to type the word love, the most important thing in the universe, and then control enter to populate all those cells. And then I'm going to click in M1. Now I'm going to turn this off. Everything that got recorded got recorded exactly in those cells. If I highlight all this and clear it, home, clear, clear all, the keyboard shortcut, uh, Alt EAA, that's from earlier versions, edit, clear, clear all. All right, now let's run our keyboard shortcut. Um, oh, we didn't assign one. So how do we run the macro? Alt F8. And sure enough, there it is, add color. Now we can click run. And just like that, it did that. That's a great trick if you have a, like a little income statement or a little inventory table that you always do. I'm going to Alt EAA. Now I want to Alt F8 to open that back up. And I want to assign a keyboard shortcut. There it is, options. So if you forget, you can assign a keyboard shortcut. I'm going to Control Shift B. Click OK. <coughs> Close. Now I'm going to insert a new sheet. Shift F11. Shift F11. Now I want to see if that works. Control Shift B. And sure enough, just like that, but it's an absolute macro. Now let's go look at the code. Alt F8. I'm going to click there and edit. You can see now on the left in our Project Explorer here, there's uh, our week 10. Here's all the sheets, which you could, uh, and then the worksheet. And there's our module. And sure enough, uh, we can read the code here, look at it. Range, and that's different than the offset. It says N1 to P6.select, and then it's got all this stuff that recorded, and down, oh, lots of stuff, way more stuff than we needed. That's typical of the macro recorder. And then finally, uh, we selected the range uh, M1. That was the last thing we did. End sub. So up at the top, there was the word sub, and then the name of our macro, and uh, some parentheses. Now I want to do uh, one uh, another macro. We're going to build a little template. Um, I'm going to start over here, and this is just, I'm going to collapse this. Control F1. And I want to just build a little teeny income statement, just a small version of it. If you had a report you always did like this, then you could do whatever elaborate steps you want. But let's try it. I'm going to click here, and I'm going to say basic income statement. And I'm going to add the uh, keyboard, actually, not no keyboard shortcut this time. I'm going to save it in this workbook. I'm going to say uh, create company income statement template. All right, so you ready? Let's click OK. And we always start off with uh, the company name, enter. Uh, this is going to be the income statement. And then the date, um, four month ended and we're not going to put a date because we'll we can fill that in now I'm gonna uh, hit enter and type revenue and then expense one and then I'm going to type total total expense and then net income. I'm just doing this as quickly as I can. Notice I'm typing stuff in cells. Uh, we have, this is absolute, so this will always be done in exactly these cells. And I'm going to put some dummy data in here. So uh, 10 for revenue. And then I'm going to highlight all these cells and type 1. And then I'm going to click right here and type equals SUM. And this is um, absolute, so it'll always record B5 to B13. Enter, and then I'm going to say equals this minus uh, the total. Enter. Now I'm going to do some formatting. 
Control-1 for format cells. I'm going to do alignment. Wrap text. I'm going to do a border on the outside. I'm going to do fill. This is that color font. Just doing stuff. Uh, now I'm going to use the format painter. And then the format painter again. I'm going to control asterisk, which highlights the whole table. Add borders everywhere. And then I'm going to come here and control shift 1, which adds uh, number format. I'm going to have to do some, some more formatting. So for total expense, I need to control one. I need to do borders. I need one on the top. And then one down here also. And finally, the bottom line here, I'm going to need control one. I'm going to click a double line on the bottom. I'm going to highlight these two columns, double click. Actually expand them a little bit more. And then I'm going to click right there in cell C16. Right there is the Stop Record button. And we want to click it and then verify that actually uh, the Turn On button appears. And now we know it is stopped. Now, let's test it, and then we'll go look at the code. And by the way, that Stop button in 2003 is on a floating uh, Stop Recording toolbar. Now I want to insert a sheet and test it, so I'm going to Shift F11 to insert a sheet. Shift F11. And oh, we didn't assign a keyboard shortcut, so I'm going to open up our list of macros, Alt F8. And there it is, basic income statement, and then click Run. Zip. And just like that, it made our little template. So if you have a template like that, boy, is that a great trick to know how to record a macro. Let's go look at the code. Alt F8. You can click on this and then click Edit. I'm going to do it a different way. Alt F11 open. Oh, but wait a second. Uh, I just know something. That formula is giving us minus 19. And sure enough, look, look at that minus sign. So that's incorrect. So we'll go look at uh, the macro and then we'll try and edit it. Alt F11 opens up. Oops, you got to hold. I clicked Escape. Alt, you got to hold it down and then hit F11. And over here, we want to make sure we're in the right place. There's our week 10. We can see our personal up there, but we recorded this one in week 10. Um, and by the way, if this is all closed, this you can close all the open uh, windows with code. You scroll down in your particular workbook, and there we can see a module folder was created, and there's our module. That has our recorded macro. I'm going to double click it, and then it opens up over here. Now. You can see here it's got range and, oh, that's the add color. And then right here is the income statement. You can see it's got range, A1. That was much different than uh, when we, scroll, if we were to scroll up and remind ourselves what we uh, recorded for the pay special values in the personal, if I double click this, you can see that offset, right? That's what gets recorded if you do relative. Now I'm going to scroll down to our, our week 10. Double click the module there. And we don't see any offset here. It says range and then open parentheses and then that uh, cell reference in quotes. But here it is. We can see the whole thing. Um, and sure enough, this formula, active cell, we can kind of guess what's going on here. But see that minus right there? Uh, that should not be a minus. So we're going to backspace. Now, if you know, when you're doing this for the first time, sometimes you don't, it's intimidating to come in and try to uh, change anything. In that case, uh, we'll see if this works, and I'll show you what you do in that other case. <laughs> Basically, you delete the macro and start over. Even, and I remember when I first started doing macros many years ago, had nothing but trouble. Always were, took me five, ten times. But if it was a worthwhile macro that was going to save a lot, lot of time, I just did it five times until I got it right. All right, uh, let's click Control S. I like to click, click Control S once I get my uh, macro. And I'm going to close this and see if we can insert a sheet. Shift F11. And now I'm going to run my macros. Alt F8. Click on the basic income statement and run. And so now uh, that did fix the, the formula. Uh, right there, so we got it right. Now, if you can't get it to work, uh, you just Alt F8, click on it, and delete, and it deletes it, and then you create it again. 
Uh, okay, so macro is amazing for repetitive tasks. Uh, when we come back in our next video, we have a bunch of uh, macros that will help us with repetitive tasks. All right, see you next video.